this lecture we are going to look at the super elevation of a road super elevation is one of the most important thing in highway geometric design so we have some kind of introduction about super elevation on the horizontal alignment section you know now what is the value of super elevation we need to consider depending on the radius of an alignment or the radius of a curve in this section we are looking at how to apply super elevations to an alignment so here in this section we are looking at the super elevation according to rda design guidelines uh, if you think this is a plan view of the road this is a straight section this straight part and this blue section is a uh, curved portion in the straight section you have a road of this kind you have slopes both side of the road from the center line you call this the normal cross fall when you come into the curve to provide proper centrifugal force we have to rotate this pavement or rotate this road in such a way that it provides the centrifugal acceleration to counteract the centrifugal force so in that scenario your pavement will look like this it will rotate like this so when the curve is rotating in this direction we call it a clockwise direction curve so in this clockwise direction curve you can see your right side is turned upward and your left side is turned downward so if you can compare these two images you can see your uh, actually your right side is at the bottom side and your left side is at the top side so if you consider compare these two images you can see the right side of the of both images have same slope or kind of same uh, direction it is sloping into the same direction but when you consider the left side in the first image or in the straight section the left side slope this way downward but it has turned upward from the center line it has turned upward in the uh, curve so you can see the road has turned from this view to this view within this curve this uh, along this road so actually what has happened is this let us say in this straight section you have your road as minus 2.5 super elevation we call it normal cross fold and when you come inside the curve you have for the left side you have plus 2.5 and to the right side you have minus 2.5 so since this right side is same but your left side have different super elevation or different slopes so if you consider the right side this right side has to rotate upward and come to plus 2.5 some in somewhere in this road so it will occur along some distance it will occur along some distance we call it super elevation transition this super elevation transition from minus 2.5 plus 2.5 it, occur, it occurs along some distance we call it super elevation transition distance so otherwise we call it super elevation development length so i have named this section as super elevation transition without spirals if you can remember spirals are curves where you change the radius from infinite to a definite value but without spiral means this straight and curve is smoothly joined that means there is no spiral this straight section is tangent to this curved section this is this this is kind of a smooth connection but if you have a spiral curve that is 
more desirable for drivers that is more smooth connection than this one but in this lecture series we will not be looking at the spirals we will look, not be looking at only uh, roads without spirals so now we have some kind of idea this super elevation transition is happening inside this road to rotate the payment from minus 2.5 to plus 2.5 so we call this as attainment of super elevation so the change of super elevation from normal cross pole to full super elevation that means from minus 2.5 to plus 2.5 is called the super elevation development length actually even if i when i say minus 2.5 to plus 2.5 it is only for this example but if this is super elevation minus 5 and plus 5 this distance would be the super elevation development length so it should be gradually uh, it should be gradually over a distance without appreciable reduction in speed or safety or comfort so when you are rotating the pavement you have to rotating the pavement along some distance of the road so that should be a gradual variation of the pavement rotation so it, it might not feel to the driver that there is a uh, change in the cross slope of the road change in the, the slope of the road so we call it uh, the comfort effect of the road so when we are rotating the road it should be rotating at a rate that is comfortable for the driver so there are three methods to uh, attain super elevation development length but mainly what we are using is rotate the payment about the center line if i go here this payment is rotated along this center line you can see this part is turned upward along this so about this center line so most in most cases we are rotating the payment about the center line that is they are we uh, consider super elevation development length so this is actually what happens in developing super elevation you have a normal crown section or a normal straight section your road will be like this if it is normal crown this is minus 2.5 then it is going into a curve in the curve you have full super elevation that, that is kind of super elevation value if you say this value is 2.5 this side will be minus minus 2.5 this side will be plus 2.5 as in the previous image we saw if this is minus uh, if the super elevation is plus 4 this side should be minus 4 this side should be plus 4 plus 4 so in this example this curve will this curve will be super elevated like this inside the curve so you can see along this length this left side is turned upward along this length this left side is turned upward or rotate upward to get the required super elevation so from the start of rotation to stop of the complete rotation there is some distance along the road we call it the super elevation development length this length can be calculated by two methods according to our LA design guidelines they are relative gradient method and rate of payment rotation method so this relative gradient method is depends or is uh, designed or defined uh, by considering the appearance criteria that means this rotation is uh, taken place with some distance if this distance is very uh, low so the drivers see that within a short period or short length of road 
the payment is rotated the driver see it so that in that case the appearance criteria is not good in other in other uh, case about the comfort criteria where you have the rate of payment rotation if this payment is rotated and come to full super elevation in a small length or a very lesser length the driver feels that when he is driving in the in the curve suddenly the ro uh, payment rotates suddenly the road slope ro uh, changes it it feels to the drivers and the people inside the vehicle so in that case your comfort criteria is not satisfied so there are two methods to calculate this super elevation development length so that you can have, you can get the relative gradient method with appearance criteria and rate of payment rotation with comfort criteria so when you are calculating the super elevation development length you will need to calculate for both of these methods and get the maximum value from these two methods so when you get the maximum value it will satisfy both these criteria so that is how to uh, get the super elevation development length actually how how we uh, calculate super elevation development length now we are going to see the the equation to calculate the super elevation development length so first we will look at the relative gradient method so this is the equation for relative gradient methods it is given as le which is the super elevation development length equals w into e plus n over gr so le means super elevation development length as i told you earlier w means width of the carriage way including hard shoulder so if you can remember the lecture we told about the cross section of the roadway i told you carriage way and uh, what is carriage way and what is lane width and what is hard shoulder so this w means lane width plus hard shoulder width usually uh, the uh, the correct way to get this would be the lane width w is usually considered at, as lane width but in sri lanka we uh, use both uh, lane width and hard shoulder width for the w so that means w equals addition of lane width and hard shoulder width so e means the super elevation of the curve and n means the normal cross fall so e plus n means uh, without considering this e plus n uh, part what actually happens is how much of a rotation has happened inside the curve that means if i go back to this previous slide here actually the rotation is happening on the left side right side is fixed so what how much from how much a change is happening on the left side that is meant by the e plus n term e plus n means minus 2.5 to plus 2.5 the how much change from minus 2.5 to plus plus 2.5 that that change is 5 so e plus n equals 5 that is how to get that easily without considering those this e plus n term you just think from how much the payment values change that is the easiest way then there is a factor called relative gradient and it should be obtained using the relative gradient table so if you have one lane which is rotating that means if there is a if that is a two lane road each lane would be rotated separately so you have to use this if uh, use this column to get the gr value if you are designing for 50 km per hour and if it is a two lane road you should take 0.671 as gr so if it is a four lane road uh, two lanes would be rotated in one side you have to learn, use this 
two lane column if the lanes number of lanes are more than four lanes you have to do, use this uh, column actually uh, with if, you, if the road is uh, a single way road or one way road if the if the number of lanes are greater than two you have to use this column if the number of lanes are uh, greater than one or equals to two you have to use this column if it is a uh, one way road so it depends on the rotation lanes uh, in the actual scenario so that is how to get the gr value now we are moving on to the other method which is the rate of payment rotation method in that method we are uh, defining the super elevation development length as le equals e plus n into v over 3.6 beta so le is the length of super elevation development length e plus n term as i told you earlier it implies how much of change in the super elevation occurs in this transition or in this super elevation development length so it is the same thing we learned in the relative gradient criteria then v is the design speed of the road in kilometers per hour then beta factor depends on the design speed of the road so if your design speed is less than 80 kilometers per hour your beta value should be 0.035 if your design speed is greater than 80 kilometers per hour or equal to 80 kilometers per hour you have to use the beta value as 0.025 then we have something called positioning of super elevation development length so up to this point we have learned what is the super elevation development length we need to get to rotate the pavement or rotate the road to achieve the super elevation from normal cross pole to a value of some kind of super elevation so if i move back to this slide you know this super elevation development length then there is a thing we have to consider that is where we need to place this length of super elevation because there is a straight portion and there is a curved portion so we need to know whether we put this all le length that means whether we rotate this total payment within the straight section or within the curved section or some part of in the straight section and some part in the curved section so 